did you know that once upon a time, you could actually take the SSD out of your MacBook and either replace it or upgrade it with a higher capacity one? And in this video, I want to explore the last upgradable MacBook Pro and also take you through the process of upgrading the internal 128 gigabyte SSD with a much larger one for really not that much cost at all. Anyway, let's begin. But first, let's rewind the clock a little bit. Did you know that Steve Jobs was extremely proud of the fact that you could open earlier models of the MacBook and upgrade the parts inside yourself? That's right, it was actually a selling point. It looks like that philosophy though has died with Steve because right after his death, Apple started moving towards a completely soldered MacBook ecosystem. And just six years later, in 2017, this transition was completed. But one MacBook managed to survive the great soldering evolution. This one, the 2017 non-touch bar MacBook Pro. And it is Apple's last upgradable laptop. I bought this specific MacBook a few years ago, and while 128 gigabytes is just enough for normal day-to-day -day usage, if you keep any more than a few gigabytes of files on your SSD at once, it really starts to become restrictive. And let's be honest, when most people shop for these things, the SSD upgrades are really expensive, so most people just stick with the base model amount, in this case, 128 gigabytes. So let's go shopping for a new SSD open this bad boy up and replace that teeny tiny 128 gigabyte SSD. Okay, so I need a couple things before starting this project. First, a new SSD. Now, you can't get just any SSD because it has to actually fit inside the MacBook. So it needs to be a specific size, a 2242 form factor M.2 NVMe to be specific. I decided to go for this super cheap Samsung OEM 512 gigabyte drive for about 75 US dollars. It'll quadruple the storage capacity of my MacBook while keeping costs low. Another option is from Sabrent if you want a drive that's a little bit faster and with larger capacity. 512 gigabytes though is plenty enough for me. Next, I need an adapter because, surprise surprise, Apple uses some weird proprietary connection for the SSD. 20 bucks later, I have my adapter and we can get started. By the way, I will link the SSD and the adapter and all the tools I used in the description. Once all important files are backed up, if necessary, it's time to open up the back case of the MacBook. There are six P5 screws that need to be removed, but for some reason, there were only four screws in this MacBook. So I guess I'll need to get some replacements. Getting the back case off is a little tricky on these models. So I used the picks from an iFixit repair kit and even some kind of thin credit card will work to pop the side clips holding the back case. Some suction cups also help to create space under the case to slip something between the gap. Again, this is all in the iFixit repair kit. Then I just pulled the case down and it should just pop straight off. Next, I had to disconnect the battery to make sure there was no electricity going to any of the components and I wouldn't short any of them. I pulled back the plastic covering and placed it to the side. There's a little clip that connects to the logic board and this has to be disconnected and pulled back. Lastly, I'll use a T5 screw head to remove the screw holding the battery connector in place. This gives me access to a little metal clip and I just slightly bent it back so it wouldn't make a connection and also slid a plastic clip under it to make sure it wouldn't inadvertently make contact. Okay, time for the SSD itself. Now, if you didn't already notice, it's this little silver rectangular thing in the top right hand corner. Removing it is also pretty simple. I just removed the two T5 screws holding it in place and peeling back this black sticky plastic covering the port connector allowed me to use it to leverage and wiggle the SSD out of place. And there you have it, Apple's proprietary 128 gigabyte SSD. Fun fact, there are direct replacement SSD modules like this for sale, but this method is much cheaper. Okay, time for the fun part. Let's install this third party SSD that will give this MacBook three times more storage for only around 75 US dollars. The adapter makes this process easier than a tech support scammer getting $400 out of your grandma. All I did was insert the SSD into the adapter and make sure it was firmly in place. I also used one of the included screws to make sure the SSD wouldn't come out. 
Then I gently wiggled the entire adapter into the SSD port on the MacBook. This was a little tricky, but I'm used to playing with really small things. At this point, you just repeat the disassembly process, but in reverse. Replace the two SSD screws, reconnect the battery screw, insert the little cable back into place, and replace the plastic covering. Then reattach the back case. Now, reattaching this can be a little bit tricky, so I recommend lining up the back edge and pushing it in so that the little metal clips on the case line up with the clips on the inside of the chassis. Then I just pressed down on the case until it clipped back into place and reinserted the screws. Now I'm going to see if the MacBook powers back on. So I made sure I had a big bottle of vodka nearby just in case it doesn't, and I pressed the power button. Luckily, the Mac gods were looking down on me and it turned on. This little flashing question mark folder might seem alarming, but it's actually a good thing. That just means that the Mac is detecting the drive, but there's no Mac OS installed on it, obviously. And that leads me to my next task. Turning the computer off and then turning it back on again and holding down Command and R at the same time will get me to internet recovery. From here, I'll need to format this new SSD. Going into Disk Utility, you can immediately see OS X Base System, which is essentially just a tiny little bit of storage built into the MacBook for recovery purposes. Clicking on this dropdown and selecting Show All Devices will bring up any storage devices your Mac detects, and I can see the Samsung drive is successfully showing here with 512GB of storage. So I clicked on Arrays, gave the SSD a name, and ensured that GUID Partition Map was selected for the Scheme option. I also selected APFS for the format because this is Apple's most recent file system that works very, very well with SSDs. After that, I hit Arrays, waited until the drive had completed the process, and then exited Disk Utility and went into Reinstall macOS. Now, obviously High Sierra is not the most recent version of macOS, but that's okay, I can simply upgrade this later on. Now, depending on the internet connection, the install process can take anywhere from 10 minutes to a few hours. But once that's done, set everything back up. If you have a time machine backup, you can use that. I don't as I just save everything in iCloud. And voila, you now have a brand new 512 gigabyte internal SSD for all of your uh, uh, personal files. Now, this particular Samsung drive isn't the fastest, but it's about the same as the Apple SSD I just replaced. Honestly, 99% of people don't need super fast SSD speeds, and these speeds here are perfect, especially for just 75 bucks. So yeah, I'm very happy with this ultra cheap upgrade. I mean, if you have a spare 80 bucks laying around, it's definitely one of the most cost effective upgrades you can make if you have this specific model of MacBook. Going from 128 gigabytes to 512 gigabytes is honestly a massive and noticeable improvement. So if you've got a spare 80 bucks laying around, maybe consider doing something like this to your MacBook. But apart from that guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.